Welcome to the January 2023 Coffee Corner by Bentley Systems, where we'll be discussing STAD integration topics. Our topic today is going to be introducing you to workflow to show you how you can design concrete slabs with STAD Pro, iTwin Analytical Synchronizer, and RAM Concept. Now, before we do that, let me also go ahead and introduce myself. My name is Sabrina Tedeschi, and I'm going to be your presenter today. Just to give you a little background on myself, I am a structural engineer, and I've been with Bentley Systems for almost 15 years. I conduct training courses and create training programs for all of the products within our RAM and STAD product lines. Before working for Bentley Systems, I did work in the industry for an architectural engineering firm, and I designed large commercial structures out of a variety of materials, including steel and concrete. Let's go ahead and move on to our next slide. And what I'd like to start off with is our problem statement. So what is it that we're trying to solve with our workflow today? So let's say that I have a STAD Pro model that contains a variety of structural elements, including a two-way reinforced concrete slab. Now, my eventual goal is to provide full working drawings, including a fully designed reinforcement layout for the concrete slabs. My plan is to use STAD Pro and STAD Advanced Concrete to perform the complete analysis and design of the vertical force resisting system, including the concrete columns and walls. Now, this structure doesn't contain any steel elements, but if it did, I would also be using STAD Pro to complete those designs. Now, what about the concrete slabs in this model? I want to be able to detail the reinforcement evaluate the slab for punching shear, and calculate the load history deflections. One solution would be to use RAM concept to design the concrete slab systems. With iTwin Analytical Synchronizer and a few special modeling techniques in the STAD Pro Physical Modeler, you can now send concrete surfaces that were modeled in STAD Pro to RAM concept for the design and detailing of the concrete slabs. This is what we're going to be focusing on for today's session. So let's go ahead and discuss our proposed agenda for today. Over the course of this session, we will point out a few modeling techniques in the STAD Pro Physical Modeler that will ensure a successful transfer of data to RAM concept through iTwin. We will show you how to create a new repository in the iTwin Analytical Synchronizer from a STAD Pro physical model, and we will show you how to pull that iTwin repository into RAM concept for the design of the concrete slab. So before we begin, let's first discuss the advantages of using both iTwin analytical synchronizer and RAM concept in your workflow. This portion of the discussion will be especially important for those of you who are not familiar with those products. Now, Bentley's analytical iTwin technology, and it was formerly referred to as Integrated Structural Modeling, or ISM, is developed for sharing engineering project information amongst modeling, analysis, design, drafting, and detailing applications. iTwin technology is similar to building information modeling, but it focuses on the information that is important in the analysis, design, construction, and modification of infrastructure assets. Now there are two related purposes of ISM. It's to transfer or synchronize the engineering information between applications and the coordination of engineering information between applications and project stakeholders. Now let's go ahead and discuss RAM concept because I know that this is a STAD Coffee Corner session. So I'm assuming that a lot of you are not as familiar with RAM concept. So I wanna go ahead and introduce you to this piece of software. A few key aspects of this product include the ability to design conventionally reinforced concrete slabs and mat foundations, including the ability to create your own custom reinforcement layout. We have the ability to design post-tension concrete slabs and map foundation with realistic tendon modeling and the ability to perform an optimization on a post-tension layout. We can evaluate concrete slabs for punching shear. 
we can calculate accurate load history deflections, including the effects of cracking, creep, shrinkage, tension stiffening, and load sequence. And we can also evaluate concrete slabs for walking-induced vibration response. The first main topic we're going to discuss is how to prepare your STAD Pro physical model in order to ensure your surfaces can be properly transferred to RAM concept through iTwin Analytical Synchronizer. This will include the process for modeling surfaces and regions within your model. This will include the process for assigning surface alignment if you have any steps or different slab thicknesses at the same level. This will include assigning your member and surface attributes so those objects can be successfully read into RAM concept. And lastly, this will be assigning your surface story data. Now, what is important about the surface story data is that this is an option that was added within the latest release of STAD Pro. This would be STAD Pro Connect Edition version 22, update 12. We will now turn our attention to our model in the STAD Pro Physical Modeler. So let's go ahead and turn your attention to my screen over in the STAD Pro Physical Modeler. Now here you can see I've already created my building structure in the STAD Pro Physical Modeler. This contains quite a few pieces of information that have been defined. It includes our uh, vertical, load resisting system for this particular building structure. I have concrete columns and concrete walls supporting it. I've modeled all of my slabs, which are concrete slabs, which will be behaving as two-way concrete slabs, as surfaces. I've also created a few basic load combinations, uh, not combinations, cases, and specified some gravity loading on these concrete slabs. So all of the information for this particular building structure has already been defined in STAD Pro, and I'm gonna point you to a few of those modeling techniques that I utilized to get this model to where it is right now. And we will begin that discussion by understanding how RAM Concept designs concrete slabs. Now I'm gonna use RAM Concept to design the slabs in my system. So how does RAM Concept design slabs? Well, RAM Concept will design slabs from one level at a time in your structure. Now for example purposes, I'm gonna go ahead and use this floor. This is my third floor of my 3D building structure. I'm gonna go ahead and isolate that floor and we'll go ahead and show you some of the pieces of information that we specified. Okay, so I'm taking a look at the third floor level. You can see I have everything currently selected in this particular model. And here, let's go to the spreadsheet area and review some of this information. Now, as you can see, my overall slab was created as a surface in STAD Pro. Now, this is very important. The way the slab design works in RAM concept is we do like to model an overall slab perimeter. Then what we like to do is use any type of other slab objects to define anything that's maybe slightly different about it. In the STAD Pro Physical Modeler, we would use regions for that purpose. Okay, so here for my particular model, let's go to the spreadsheet area and I'm going to go to the surfaces area. Here you can see I've created an overall surface for this particular model, happens to be number 204, to represent the entire slab. Now for this particular model, or for any model in the STAD Pro Physical Modeler, how would I define something that's maybe different within that main field of the slab? Maybe there's a different thickness, or there's a different loading, or there's different material properties for whatever reason. What I would do is I would define that as a region within the overall slab perimeter, okay? So for this particular model, let's go ahead and flag the entire level. I do have a couple of regions created. Here, if I go to the spreadsheet tab, I can go to the region area. And you can see on this particular level, I do have two regions defined. The first region is region five, that's over in this particular area. And then I have another region over 
in this particular area. Whenever you create a new region within STAD Pro, it's automatically going to be assigned to the main surface for which it is contained. This will allow me to assign different properties to regions five and six when I go ahead and finish my modeling steps in STAD Pro. Now for this particular model, I chose to apply different types of loading to those particular areas or regions. And I also chose to assign a different slab thickness to one of my regions in my model. So you can see my overall slab is a certain thickness. And then I went ahead and assigned a different thickness to one of the regions within the main slab. The next thing I want to talk about is the surface alignment, because again, with regions, you can assign a different thickness as your main slab. So let's go and take a look at that. So here you can see for surface 204, my thickness is 12 inches thick. Okay. And I gave it an alignment of a bottom alignment. Okay, now the alignment is basically used specifically for when you're sending this model data over to iTwin Analytical Synchronizer. I'm eventually going to be designing the slabs. I want those surfaces at their proper elevation. Now we have a couple different options available in the STAD Pro Physical Modeler for setting up that alignment. The default is going to be at the centroid. So that basically means the nodes that define the edge of slab will be placed at the centroid or you know, mid-depth of the slab. If your slab thickness changes, it'll stay at the mid-depth, okay? You also have the option to say if it's a top alignment, meaning those nodes now move to the top of the surface, or if it's a bottom alignment. I went ahead for this model and said it's a bottom alignment. Where my slab steps, I also set a bottom alignment. Okay, now how do I assign that? In the STAD Pro Physical Modeler, anytime you wanna assign any type of property, what you're gonna do is you're gonna go ahead and select what it is you're interested in on your main screen. When you notice that you select a surface, you're gonna notice that the surface tab is available in your ribbon toolbar. And here you'll be able to go ahead and assign an alignment. Again, your default's going to be at center, but you can change that to top or bottom. I went ahead and changed it to bottom for this example. In addition to that, if your model contains any regions, you can go ahead and view that information as well in the spreadsheet area. Here is my region. You can see that region number five, that's this particular area here, and I apologize, it's not quite showing up on my screen, but it is in this area. Um, the thickness is basically eight inches. I went ahead and put a placement point at the bottom of it, okay? If your region is missing fields of data, it means it's going to inherit that data from the overall slab it's assigned to. That's why each region is assigned to another surface, okay? So if there's anything empty here, like you can see here, I didn't define the material properties, for my regions. So what happens? It inherits the material properties from the surface it's assigned to, which is 204. So I only need to define for my regions anything that's different, okay? For region number five, this area, I went ahead and said it's eight inches thick, placements at the bottom. That means that the elevation of the bottom of the slab of this whole level is at one elevation, and then the thickness kind of goes up from there. I'm going to expect, once I get over into RAM concept, a four inch step in this particular model. Now again, to assign alignment, if I'm talking about a surface, I'm gonna go here. If I'm talking about a region, I'm gonna go here, okay? Same idea, or it can be entered directly into the spreadsheet. The next thing that's going to be important when I'm sending this over to RAM concept, and this is a RAM concept specific thing, is to make sure that you assign the appropriate attributes, okay? So let's go ahead and I'm gonna go ahead and turn on my entire model again, because this will make it just a little bit easier to see. And let's go ahead and select the model. Now in RAM concept, we have the ability to model slab systems. They could have concrete beams embedded within them. They can be supported or be supporting uh, concrete walls and concrete columns. 
Now, understanding the types of objects that RAM concept can understand will be very important for utilizing this workflow. In STAD Pro, we don't typically design, uh, assign something as a beam or a column. We just say it's a member. Same thing for surfaces. We don't differentiate between wall and slab. They're just a surface of finite element meshes that's going to be, you know, determined during the analysis process. For RAM concept, though, RAM concept needs to know what's a beam, what's a column, so it knows that it brings it in as the right type of object. Okay, and for that, we've gone ahead and enabled an option to add an attribute to a member or a surface in your model. So here for the particular, for this particular model, let's go to the spreadsheet tab. And let's go to the surfaces area, and we're going to see this field attribute has already been filled in. The way you're going to assign an attribute for your surfaces is you're going to select your surface, go to the surface area, and then attribute is a pull down menu. So that way you don't have to worry about, did I spell it right? Did I pick the right thing? The way we're going to read these things in is basically when it goes over to the iTwin analytical synchronizer, this will define what that element is used for. So if it's defined as a wall, it'll be used as a wall. If it's designed as a slab, it'll be used as a slab. Doesn't affect anything on the STAD Pro analysis end, but it will go ahead and define that officially in the iTwin analytical synchronizer. And RAM Concept will use that information when it decides which objects are eligible to pull in. So here you can see I've gone ahead and assigned attributes to walls and slabs for my entire model. So this attribute field, this is what's going to be important when I'm preparing my model for pulling it in to RAM Concept. In addition to that, I also want to make sure that my members are assigned those attributes as well. Uh, my choices for that are going to be basically beam or column, okay? So if I go to my spreadsheet area, I can go to the properties on my members. Nope, the members tab. And you can see here, I actually only have one beam in my model, so I assigned that as a beam. Everything else is assigned as a column. To assign those attributes, again, you could just go to your member tab, go to your attribute pull down menu, and these are the options that are available to you. I focused on beam and column because there actually is no brace object in RAM concept. The last thing we're gonna take a look at is your story data. And this is again specific if we're going to be sending this model over to RAM concept. RAM concept designs slabs one story at a time. And for it to understand what a story is upon the import or upon pulling your repository into RAM concept, it'll go ahead and ask you, which level are we working on right now? Okay, okay. Now for this particular model, I'm gonna be working on this particular surface. This is what I'm going to be designing in RAM concept. So if I were to select all the surfaces in my model, you could see that when you select your surfaces, actually let's select just the horizontal surfaces, Okay, and we can go to the spreadsheet area and we're gonna find this option. This is our story numbering. You're gonna see the stories that are currently selected. I ordered mine from bottom to top, one, two, three, four, five. Um, you can order yours. Every floor needs a unique number, okay? Um, and that's what I would, I would focus on for, for this. Now, I, when this is being brought into RAM concept, Basically, any vertical element that is attached to the story that you're bringing in will also be brought in for the purposes of being able to evaluate some additional things like where are your supports, where are we checking for punching shear, that sort of thing. What are your span lengths? So here I've gone ahead and assigned different story levels in my model. Now to learn how to do that, if this is new for you, you're gonna to go to the modeling tab and we're gonna find this option here to assign your story numbering. And as everything else within the STAD Pro Physical Modeler, you can go ahead and enter it directly in the spreadsheet if for whatever reason you prefer that. So here you can see you can add a story number. It'll automatically add a story number to whatever you have selected. The way I would do this is I would select one at a time, say story, go to the next floor up, select story and so forth.
Now, as I mentioned earlier, applying this story parameter, this is new that was available in the most recent update of STAD Pro. If I were to take a look at Bentley Communities, that would be STAD Pro Connect Edition version 22 update 12. This story data is very important. This is a significant enhancement to the STAD Pro Physical Modeler because this is one of the main things that made it possible for us to now pull this model into RAM concept. So if this is a workflow you like, I'm definitely going to encourage you to go ahead and download that. There's some additional information again in our Bentley Communities page. Now that we've gone over the major options that are available or the modeling techniques that I would encourage when doing this workflow, let's go ahead and create an ISM repository or basically an iTwin analytical synchronizer model. Okay. I don't have to select everything. I just, for whatever reason, like to do that. So in my ribbon toolbar in the STAD Pro Physical Model, when I'm ready, I'm going to go to the Model tab and then select iTwin Services. Now, as mentioned earlier, iTwin Analytical Technology is developed for sharing engineering product information amongst modeling, analysis, design, drafting, and detailing applications. Now, the first step when creating an iTwin repository is to go ahead and make that decision of, do I want to use a local workflow or do I want to use a cloud-based workflow? For today's session, I'm going to create a local repository, which means that this repository will reside on my machine. Just to give you a little background on the cloud application services, though, with this, you do get a few extra bells and whistles. You have the issue to go ahead and do some clash detection and some design review options because it is assumed that you're sharing this with multiple disciplines. Let's go ahead and go back to the local directory, which is the workflow we're going to be using today. Now, to prepare for this session, I already created my ISM repository, but we're going to do that live. So what I'm going to do is the first time you create this, you're going to create your ISM repository. You're going to click on, let me show you that again, repository or synchronize to file. You're going to click on that and we'll go ahead and say new. I'm going to create a new repository for this coffee corner. So let's go ahead and call it coffee corner coffee corner repository. Okay. Let's go ahead and click the save option. You can go ahead and locate it anywhere locally that you want. And we will go ahead and confirm. So here's our repository. Okay. This repository is brand new. So we don't have the option to pull anything from it because it's blank. Uh, we only have the option at this point in our workflow to push to the, the iTwin analytical synchronizer. Now, before I go ahead and create a new model, I do like to review my settings. Here, I can go ahead and say, where is the origin of this particular model? I'm going to leave it at its default. I'm going to say the origin of this model can be the origin of my RAM concept model. That's, that's fine with me. For interoperability, I'm going to go ahead and send some loads. I'm going to go ahead and send all of my objects and my member alignments. I can also enter some tolerance options. Typically in this particular area, I set everything to the default. Take a look at my repository. If everything looks all right, then I think that these settings uh, work for my purposes. Now at this point, let's go ahead and push it to the file. The push to the file, we're officially creating this repository. This is an option I like to point your attention to, especially if you're new to the iTwin Analytical Synchronizer, because it's kind of a small checkbox of show change management, okay? This is an important option because what it'll do is with this unselected, it'll go ahead and set everything over to your iTwin Analytical Synchronizer without asking you what objects do you want, what objects do you not want in your common repository. With the change management turned on, you can go ahead and select which objects you want to exist in the repository versus which ones you don't. I would say that the change management is probably uh, more appropriate when you get a little further down in your design process, like say when you're updating a repository. But if you also have miscellaneous stuff in your Stat Pro model that you don't think is necessary in your 
iTwin analytical synchronizer. You can also choose to go ahead and disregard that. It'll still reside in your STAD Pro model, but it won't be a candidate for sending those types of objects or information to anything else. So let's go ahead and say push. I left change management turned on, so I'm expecting to see the iTwin analytical synchronizer pop on my screen once it's read in all its data. With that off, you're not gonna see that pop up. So if you wanna see that pop up, that's the, the toggle that you're gonna go back and forth on. Now it may get minimized at the bottom of your screen. Just kind of look for that icon. And here I can see that my model has been brought in to the iTwin analytical synchronizer. I'm gonna go ahead and select all of the objects that were available in my STAD Pro model, but let me go ahead and point your attention to a few of those. Anytime you create a surface member within the STAD Pro physical modeler, it will come over as a surface member. You can see here, I have a variety of walls and I have a variety of slabs. Let's scroll down and select one of the slabs in our system. Okay, it looks like I selected the roof slab. This use field, this is the use field that basically gets assigned when you have assigned your attribute. If this field is blank or not available, then it means that an attribute wasn't assigned to that. And it depends upon where you're sending this iTwin analytical synchronizer, depending upon where the use field kind of falls into its workflow or if it's necessary for that application. I'm gonna go ahead and recommend assigning attributes to most of your objects if you're ever using iTwin Analytical Synchronizer, just because that'll give you the most options to be able to send that repository to anything else. So here you're gonna notice that the attribute that was assigned has been successfully assigned, slab or wall. You're gonna notice that the thickness of the slab is available as well as the material properties that I assigned to it. For me, I created a custom material in my STAD Pro model for 4,000 PSI concrete. Let's go ahead and collapse that area. I like to show you how to navigate iTwin so you can kind of understand how things come into this program, okay? Anytime you have a region defined in your STAD Pro Physical Modeler, it will come in as a surface member modifier. Here's that eight inch slab that we basically discussed earlier. Here it is over in this particular area, if you could see it highlighted. It's an eight inch slab. The attribute slab was assigned to it. I didn't assign it for the region, it automatically inherits the information from the surface it's assigned to, okay? I assigned it as 4,000 PSI concrete as well. So here I can see the thickness, I can see the placement point as well, okay? In addition to that, we can see the story data that we assigned in our model for each particular level. Again, this makes it possible for it to come into RAM concept. Along with that, I can also see all my load case information I created, my material properties, and any of my, you're gonna notice they're coming in as curved members. Curved members basically means beam column brace. After reviewing the ISM repository, I'm gonna choose what objects I want to select. For this particular workflow, I'm gonna select everything, click accept, and then I'm gonna click update. Okay, I can create a comment because I can track my changes. So I'm gonna say new building model from SPPM, STAD Pro Physical Modeler. It's a major change, click okay. That doesn't affect anything else, but it helps me track it and remind me, you know, where did this model begin? Began in the STAD Pro Physical Modeler. Now what it's doing is it's just processing the changes. It's finishing its process. My push was successful, okay? Now, let's go ahead and talk about RAM concept a little bit because we're at the point in our workflow where we're ready to pull those things into RAM concept. And hopefully you're seeing my PowerPoint um, on the screen. So these are the particular pieces of information that'll be important when you're pulling a model into RAM concept. You wanna make sure story information was assigned. We already discussed that I think in length here, and that can be assigned in the STAD Pro Physical Modeler in this latest update. Concrete slabs, footings, and beams of the imported story, if they have the appropriate attribute assigned, will be pulled in to RAM concept. In addition to that, any concrete walls and columns that are attached or connected to the imported story, if they have the appropriate attribute 
assigned to them will be brought in. It is important to understand that RAM concept does not pull in any, whether it's from this program or anything else, um, any steel information because it's specifically a concrete design software. So if you do have any steel columns sitting on top of your slab, you can go ahead and add some point loads for them directly into RAM concept, but know that those transfer forces won't be coming in because steel columns don't come in, okay? Static load cases and the load items applied directly to the slabs or beams. So this would be any uh, surface loads that are added to the surface directly in the physical modeler. Um, the load cases that you defined, any type of point loads, line loads applied directly to the surface will be brought in. Again, transfer loads, um, actually whether it's steel or concrete, won't be a candidate for coming in, but you go ahead and enter their reactions directly into RAM concept. Lastly, the concrete material and section properties assigned to the concrete objects for the imported stories will also be brought in. Now at this point, let's go ahead and launch our RAM concept. We'll give my computer a moment to get that up and running. And we're going to pull that repository into RAM concept. Once RAM concept launches, it's gonna ask you which license feature you want to use. If this will be a post-tension concrete slab, you'll select this checkbox. If not, you can leave that unselected. So I've launched RAM concept. I don't have any model open. It's a completely blank file. Now what I wanna do is I wanna pull in one of my surfaces that I created in the physical modeler. To do that, I'm gonna go ahead and start the iTwin services. Okay, so I've launched RAM concept. I don't have a particular model open and I'm gonna go ahead and pull a repository into RAM concept. So the first thing I'm gonna do after accessing the iTwin analytical services, which is available um, up in the menu from RAM concept, I'm gonna go ahead and say pull from file. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select the repository that I just created. Okay, so here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select the repository I just created, okay, and click open. Now what the program is doing is it's reading that file. I'm going to confirm this is the one I want. It's reviewing that information. So it's saying, okay, this is the version we have. Do you want change management on? It depends. Um, and in case anybody missed that last PowerPoint I was showing, basically it depends upon what you're bringing in. Now, RAM concept already knows what it can bring in. It can bring in story information. It can bring in concrete slabs, walls, columns, and footings. It can also bring in static load cases and concrete material properties. If it finds information that's not a candidate for pulling into RAM concept, it's not going to pull it in. If you wanna see that iTwin pop up on your screen, you can show the change management or you can just select pull. Let's go ahead and select pull. So I'm creating a new file in RAM concept. I'm gonna select the code option. Here you can see within RAM concept, we have several different US and international concrete design codes available. Here, I'm gonna select the ACI 318 code, and I'm gonna select the appropriate version that I wanna use. I'm going to specify US units for this session, and then I'm gonna tell the program what structure type I'm designing. Now, the structure type in RAM concept, we can design matte foundations and elevated floors. A lot of your design process for these two types of systems would be very similar in RAM concept, but when you select your structure type, what it's going to do is it's going to set up the layers in the program with the information that you're gonna be most interested in. So if I'm talking about a matte foundation, I'm gonna be able to see things like, um, surface pressures, um, like that sort of thing. So um, if I'm doing an elevated floor, I might be interested in other things like slab deflection, so for example. 
Now the last piece of information we're going to say is which story are we bringing in? Again, we can have a variety of different objects on different stories. We're going to design one story at a time in RAM concept. I'm going to bring in story number three. Okay, again, each story needs to have a unique story number assigned to it in your STAD Pro physical model. Next, we're going to finish this off by clicking OK. And it is creating the RAM concept model. And this is what I was looking for. Pull was successful. So let's go ahead and close on out of there. We can close on out of here. And now we're in RAM concept. Now in RAM concept, we organize different objects for the design of a concrete slab onto different layers. Again, the purpose for this is to just show you that you can bring this. This is a viable workflow for designing your two-way concrete slabs in RAM concept when you've originally created your model in STAD Pro. What this is going to do is it's going to save you some modeling steps. It's going to allow you to maintain that one ISM repository. You can see my slab was kind of a very uh, unique layout um, that would have actually taken me some time to go ahead and create it directly within RAM concept. So what this has done is this has saved me a lot of time. It saved me a lot of coordination. Uh, I know that my slab was drawn accurately in the STAD Pro model, so I don't have to recreate it here. Here you can see all the slab information has been brought in. Here we have our main slab. Again, in RAM concept, we like to model an overall slab. And then we like to put, I'll call it a region, but it's basically another slab on top of it when it overrides it. Within RAM concept, we understand the difference between these two different kinds of areas by assigning a priority to them, okay? Anything with a higher priority takes preference, preference over something when it overlaps something with a lower priority. All of that was done automatically for me because when we use the modeling techniques when we that we discussed for this session in the SAD Pro Physical Modeler, when we create an overall surface and then use regions um, as, you know, for whenever there's a particular area of your slab that needs a little additional information or a change in properties, we're going to automatically give your main slab a priority of zero. That basically means that anything that overlaps that slab is going to take precedence, which is exactly how regions work within um, the STAD Pro environment. So anything that was defined as a region is going to be given a priority greater than zero. Anything um, that was defined as a main slab is going to be given a priority of zero. That's something I don't have to think about when coming over here. It automatically did that for me. You can see it automatically assigns openings with a high priority as well. So what did we bring in to our RAM concept model? We brought in all of our surfaces that were modeled at this particular level. Any columns or walls either above or below the slab were also brought in to this particular model. Since our model in STAD Pro contains some load cases and some load items, those were brought in as well. You can see here the importance of specifying, let's go ahead and take a look at this, um, different attributes you could see we called something an attribute of a column in STAD Pro. It's brought into RAM concept as a column. I don't need to do any additional work. So I'm setting up my model the way I would properly do it. I also think about that when setting up my loads in my STAD Pro physical model. I'm going to use the STAD Pro load category in order to define the load type that it is. RAM concept's going to successfully read in those load types. Okay. Now I can't go through the full workflow here. But what I am going to do is let's go ahead and review some of this information in my RAM concept model. And I apologize, I am running a little long today. So here I went ahead and generated my mesh. I can go ahead and see my structural perspective. Here I can see that step in slab, the bottoms are flush. I use the surface alignment tool in the STAD Pro Physical Modeler. And we can see here that my load cases from my STAD Pro environment were brought in. If I were to take a look at the material properties, those were brought in. You can see that 4 KSI that I used. That was brought into RAM concept. I can go ahead and see that the superimposed surface loads were also brought in. Let's go ahead and go to 
this here, and I can see the surface loads that were assigned. I have several different surface loads available here um, from my STAD Pro model. All of that was brought in. Now, what do I do with this model in RAM concept? Well, once I'm in RAM concept, I'm going to proceed on with my design properties. Of course, we don't have enough time to go over all of that information in this coffee corner, but in the resource list, let's go ahead and call this floor three. I did go ahead and give you a link to training on how to use RAM concept. I know probably most of the people in here are a little less familiar with RAM concept. Um, so you might be interested in reviewing that if this is a viable workflow for you. Now, what is important in RAM concept is I can go ahead and perform a variety of design checks. I can select the slab for, I can check the slab for punching shear, one-way shear, and flexural design. I can go ahead, you can see for this particular model, I've already performed the design here. I can go ahead and review the design status plans. I could check it for load history deflection. If this slab was a post-tension slab, I can go ahead and analyze that. If this was a mat foundation, I can also do that directly within RAM concept. One thing that's important to note is that the reinforcement that's gone ahead and been detailed in your RAM concept model is a candidate for going over to the iTwin analytical synchronizer. So at some point I may choose to go ahead and manually assign my reinforcement in RAM concept. I can update my repository, which means that all of this reinforcement that I've created in the RAM concept environment for this slab, I can send over to the iTwin analytical synchronizer. That is then a candidate for going over to my BIM model or however drawing production I, I am using, okay? Now at this point, this completes our workflow for successfully bringing in a surface that was modeled in the STAD Pro Physical Modeler into RAM concept for the purposes of design. Thank you for attending today's Coffee Corner session. If you would like to learn more about the design process within RAM concept, please access our training materials that are available on the Bentley Structural YouTube channel. Again, thank you and have a great day.